Niching is specializing. It's going from being a developer to being a website developer, to being a Webflow developer, to being a Webflow developer for restaurants, to being a Webflow developer for restaurant owners in San Francisco called Bob. But niching is something that can often be feared as it might seem like by specializing in a specific industry or for a specific problem that you're reducing the amount of clients that you could work with. What you'll find is that this isn't the case as in reality, niching could be one of the main factors that could make you a more successful web developer. Now in an upcoming video, I'll talk about how you can pick a niche, but the why should always come before the how. So in this video, I'm going to outline exactly why niching is so important for web developers. So let's get into it. There are three main reasons why niching will help you become a better and more profitable web developer. So let's start with the biggest misconception first. Number one, niching will help you get more clients. So you might think by niching, you're reducing the amount of potential clients that you could work with, but in most cases, it's actually the opposite. When you niche, though you end up targeting a smaller slice of clients, usually one in a specific industry or with a specific problem they're facing, you're making it a lot more likely that clients will work with you because they see you as someone who is specialized specifically for them. So by niching, you're showing a specific client that finds you that you're gonna be the trusted option to go with. And over time, this gets easier and easier as your portfolio of previous work reflects the same kind of client. So when a new client finds you and looks at all your previous work, they can see you've worked on the same kind of project as theirs plenty of times before. Surprisingly enough though, if your work is good enough, then even if you niche, you'll still get clients reaching out to you outside of the niche just because they want to work with you specifically. This is for example, if you have a specific design style that the client wants their website to have. So by niching, you're not completely cutting away all other work. As a Webflow developer who niches specifically in doing SaaS websites, most of my leads are for software products or apps, but not all of them. I'll also get clients from other industries wanting to work with me, though I'm not specialized for them, just because of my design style or they heard about me from someone else. Number two, niching reduces your competition. So there are a lot of fish in the sea, and there are also a lot of web developers in the market. So finding a way to stand out amongst the competition is crucial for getting more clients, or if you're a fish for not getting eaten. When there's no discernible difference between you and another developer, developer, clients are always going to go for the cheaper option. But as soon as you fit a specific need for your client, you're more likely to be chosen to work with and it's much easier to charge more. Niching makes it easier for customers to build trust in a business or in a freelancer because they know that they're focused in on their specific problem or need. So when a client is given the option to work with a generic web developer or one suited to their specific situation, they'll often pick the one that's more specialized to them. This is because it's much less risky for a client to go with a developer who knows their situation compared to a developer who is just looking for any kind of work that comes their way. And number three, niching makes projects faster and easier to manage. So as you keep building out websites for a specific niche of clients, you'll keep using the same tools, techniques, and processes to get their website live. The first time you build an e-commerce clothing website will take the longest, and then the second time you build it, it will be faster, and then the third time it will be even faster. This is because you can reuse things that you've learned and built in the past for future projects. But if you're working on any project that comes your way, you'll be learning tactics and tools for all different kinds of websites where you might never use that same information again. Maybe you'll learn how to add a sign in and sign up functionality for one of your clients and then never do it again for another project. If you compare someone who is always having to learn new tools with someone who keeps using the same tools, you're going to find that the person who stays consistent with their tools is able to work on projects faster and have a much easier time managing their projects. It also makes it much easier to give advice to your clients and serve them better because you'll build up a knowledge for what works and what doesn't work in that industry. So you can more easily recommend certain pages or extensions for your clients' websites. For example, when a client wants to add functionality that you know won't help them, you'll be able to say, I've done this kind of project before and implementing this functionality actually didn't work that well. And what I've found is if we do it this way, it's gonna be more successful. So that's some of the biggest reasons why it makes sense to niche as a web developer. But the question still remains that if niching is so good, why do some studios and agencies not niche? The reason for this is actually pretty straightforward. As an individual or as a small team, it doesn't make sense to be a jack of all trades because your clients know that if you're doing it all, you're probably not doing it all very well. And this is again why it makes sense to niche. So you can focus in on a specific type of work and make each project amazing. But studios have a broader range of skills across all of their staff. So they don't have to worry as much about working on the same kind of project. You might have someone in the team who's great at animations on websites, someone who's great at doing illustrations, a couple of people who do the design side and a couple of people who do development. Individually, you might still say that each employee is niche with a specific skill, but added all together, they have all the skills to be able to take on a much broader range of projects. All of this is to say that even though some studios don't niche, as an individual, it still makes sense to, as you don't have the bandwidth to take on everything that a studio can do to the same quality that they can. 
plus the studios that do end up niching, are making it even easier for them to scale their processes and scale their team, so even studios and agencies have no excuses not to niche. So that's all for now, and in an upcoming video, I'm gonna give you examples of how exactly you might niche. But for now, let me know in the comments below any reasons why you haven't niched yet, or any other thoughts you have about niching. If you have any recommendations for future videos, feel free to pop those in the comments too. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.